comprehensive national power is economic, it's military, it's political, it has to do with influence. And in that regard, I really don't see anybody, any other power rising uh, that really challenges the American position, including China. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the myth of America's decline. Is the U.S. in a state of decline? Does its soft economy, its staggering debt and growing deficit, its wars, its gridlock legislative body suggest that America's best days are behind it? Does the rise of China threaten the U.S. position in the world? Some may say yes, but as senior fellow Robert Kagan explains in his book, The World America Made, history and the facts speak of a challenged but resilient America. Many people harbor the notion that the U.S. might be standing at the precipice of decline. What's fueling these thoughts? After the recession hit, we started hearing all this stuff. So part of this is an obvious and natural reaction to the fact that the country's been in an economic slump. Um, the second element is Americans are constantly worried about their decline. Um, one of my favorite quotations is Patrick Henry. Uh, everybody remembers Patrick Henry, uh, you know, in 1787 saying, America has lost the spirit of, of its youth. You know, in, in 1787, he was already, we were already worried about losing what we once had. And so, and actually, and there's something positive about this constant fear of decline. You know, we worried about the Japanese were going to overtake us. We worried that the Soviet Union was going to overtake us. And it leads to a constant self-examination and self-regeneration. And one of the interesting historical realities is that we've been through these kinds of great economic crises before, 1890s, 1930s, 1970s, and now. In the very next decade after every one of those past crises, the United States came back stronger than ever and in a stronger position relative to the rest of the world than it had been before. And what of the argument that America isn't what it used to be? There was a time when the U.S.'s power and its position weren't even in question. Foreign policy failures and losing wars in Vietnam and a terrible problem with racism in this country and the battles over segregation, which, by the way, did terrible damage to America's global reputation. And so, you know, it's not just that what we used to be was wonderful and now we are all, we're just terrible. Uh, it's a much more mixed picture than that. In many ways, we are exactly as we used to be. And you write, no nation falls precipitously into decline. Rather, it's uh, an occurrence that happens over many years, over decades. Well, we could go back to the Depression, which started in 1929, World War II, 10 years later in the 40s, Korean War in the 50s, Vietnam War, and the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s into the 70s. And that's quite a period of time. Doesn't that sort of fuel the argument that the U.S. could be uh, standing at the verge of decline? Eventually, the United States will decline. I think that's inevitable. Uh, Rome, uh, the Roman Empire lasted for about 600 years. Uh, we're only 200 years into our, uh, and not even as a global, globally dominant power. So the question is, what has objectively changed that, uh, that, that is a harbinger of coming American decline? Uh, there's no question that we're fixated, and rightly so, on the rise of Asia, the rise of China uh, as an economy. And China may have the largest, uh, at least in aggregate share, uh, economy in the world in a few years, although it'll still be a much poorer economy than the United States. But what's interesting is the American share of global GDP has remained remarkably constant, not just for recent years, but over the past 40 years. Depending on how you measure it, it's anywhere from 20 percent to 25 percent of global GDP. And it turns out that most of, uh, you know, who's paying the price for the rise of China, as China's share has gone up, Europe's has gone down. Japan's has gone down. The United States really hasn't gone down. These days, China and the U U.S. are always held up for side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, you write there are certain measures that are indicative of a nation's strength, its economy being one of them, its military being another. And in this regard, the U.S. is without peer. The United States still enjoys an overwhelming superiority in military force. We, you know, we have a larger and more capable and more, you know, with a lot of experience uh, military than every other nation. Um, you know, we still have a, a bigger job than everybody else does. The United States has to maintain security in numerous regions around the world. And the rise of China certainly raises issues that we have to confront, which, by the way, the Obama administration is attempting to confront. They're opening a new base in Australia. 
Um, we need to be able to provide the reassurance to allies in the region that are worried, uh, China. But, but the military issue, we, we still remain vastly superior to others. Well, what of the U.S.'s reputation around the world? How do other countries view us? Do they see us as weak or weakening? We think the United States used to be beloved and then then George Bush invaded Iraq and the world hated us. I can go through numerous periods where the world hated us. Vietnam, Nixon, um, uh, overthrowing uh, elected leaders in Guatemala and Iran. So we've not always been beloved. I think we are in pretty good shape now. I think that President Obama is you know, fairly well thought of around the world. Uh, in terms of what we need to do, obviously we need to address our domestic problems. My personal view, I'm not an expert on domestic issues, is we've got to get a hold of the entitlement issue and stop uh, trying to solve our fiscal problems by cutting the defense budget. To me, that's the critical, that's the critical error that we're in danger of making. The defense budget is a tiny, tiny portion of our overall fiscal uh, deficit. You can cut the defense budget uh, by 10 percent, by 20 percent, and not make a dent in the fiscal crisis because most of it is being driven by entitlement spending. Um, but what you do accomplish by cutting into the defense budget is you begin to shake the pillars of this world order. And the American people, are they questioning the strength of this country? If Americans sort of have imbibed the idea that our decline has already begun and is inevitable, uh, that can lead to certain approaches to foreign policy, uh, to how we should behave in the world. That can make that a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, if, if we've lacked, if we lost confidence in our ability to play this role we've been playing since the Second World War, uh, we may not play it as effectively. And I think it's very important for American political leaders, including the president, uh, to push back against that notion. I have to say, I was very glad when President Obama, in his most recent State of the Union, speech said we are not in decline uh, because I think the American people uh, need to hear that. We tend to overplay how wonderful things were in the past and then under appreciate I think what a strong position we're in now. That doesn't mean we don't have big problems, it doesn't mean that we face real challenges that we'll have to overcome, but we need to have a, a reasonable baseline. We talk about decline, decline from what? You know, what is our baseline? And for me historically um, we are not uh, weaker than we were uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brooklyn's events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.